really is just a show trial. They're, they're, it's a complete setup. And um, if it goes ahead, I, I'm just appalled. It's an end to this country's democracy and the way you know we should be going about these things. Um, it really is a sad state of affairs. If Boris Johnson's career was a film, then we're about to see the courtroom drama scene as he's interrogated about what he knew about parties in Downing Street. But are we getting near to the inevitable ending where a powerful man is finally humbled for his hubris? Or is this just a mid-film challenge before our hero springs back to glory? One thing for sure is it's going to be unmissable. You'll hear it on Times Radio on Wednesday afternoon, of course. But let's talk now to one of the former Prime Minister's supporters, Claire Bullivant. She's the editor of Conservative Post, part of a grassroots Conservative Association, the Conservative Democratic Organisation. Claire, good morning to you. Good morning, Stig. Um, what do you think? What's the point of all of this in your view? Is this something that needs to take place because there is this cloud hanging over Boris Johnson? He is accused of doing something very serious. Um, uh, misleading parliament. This needs to be addressed. Do, do you agree with that? Well, I just think this whole process lacks credibility, whichever way you look at it, Stig. Um, it's scandalous and it's such a slur on our democracy. When Parliament obviously voted for this Privileges Committee right at the beginning, they didn't know all the facts. I mean, since then, Sue Gray report, the Sue Gray report has been discredited. Her, her advising barrister has been discredited. He was caught on his Twitter account, um, you know, Boris bashing, you know, getting people to try and join the Labour Party. Um, it's just ridiculous. He even deleted his account as soon as it was um, raised up. I mean, how can it be right for a handful of MPs um, who have also, they've all sort of voiced their dislike of Boris, well, a lot of them have, um, and already made their mind up, but how can they be allowed to determine what happens to him now in his career when they haven't been um, in receipt of all the facts? And... Um, you know, it's it's just a kangaroo court as far as I'm concerned. I mean, some would say that the slur on democracy occurs if prime ministers feel they can lie with impunity. And that is, of course, the charge against him. We all saw him. Um, we all saw the evidence. We know he attended these parties. We, we know we weren't allowed to attend those parties. And so there is a, there is a legitimacy, isn't there, in at least exploring precisely what happened? No, that's actually a slur against Boris. Um, he was fined for a gathering. Um, read the net police reports. It wasn't a party. He was actually fined, and Rishi, for people coming into his office in a work day um, to sing him happy birthday. Categorically, that was what he was fined for. Also, this whole process started off as um, mans rea. That's basically a legal term which um, deciphers whether there was criminal intent. And that's how it was supposed to be. You know, was Boris intentionally misleading Parliament? Was there criminal intent? This kangaroo court has now changed that. It's no longer mens rea and they've changed it to Boris being, um, what's, what's the word, recklessly misleading. I mean, it, that is just <laughs> who did that who's questioning them um this really is just a show trial that there it's a complete setup and um if it goes ahead I, I, i'm just appalled it's an end to this country's democracy and the way you know we should be going about these things um it really is a sad state of affairs are you organizing a campaign to pressurize the tory members of the committee i see that uh, um there is a petition urging conservative party members to email the four tory mps who sit on the committee urging them to stand aside. Are you, are you, are you involved in that? Yes, that's um, our campaign. Um, we Last summer, we actually ran the Boris ballots and we ended up getting something like 80,000 um, members and Tory grassroots um, and huge supporters of Boris um, signing up to us. So they've obviously be, be, become very close to our readership and our members. And, you know, they're telling us constantly what, how they feel. Um, and yeah, that's, they've told us that's what they want. So that's what we set up. And um, yeah, they're jumping on it and they're emailing the MPs and saying, you know, what on earth are you doing taking part in this kangaroo court? Um, we don't think it should happen. Um, I mean, can you be reckless without intent? Of course you can. <laughs> um, this kangaroo court has really openly moved their own goalpost. And we don't think it should take place. Would you not say, though, that putting pressure on a privileges committee, a democratic committee set up by Parliament itself, with MPs elected by their, their constituencies on it, you putting pressure on that, you denying its validity, some would call that a slur on democracy. 
Uh, well, we, we call that voicing our rights to say, hang on, what on earth are you doing? You're supposed to be, um, you know, you're playing judge and jury when <laughs> you shouldn't be. But that's the nature um, of a if... privileges committee. He's alleged to have committed a, an offence and they and, and the House polices itself. So they get a bunch of MPs and they say, did he do it or not? That's the nature of how the parliamentary system works. The, the One of the world's most famous rock star lawyers. I mean, if, if um, you know, a lawyer was a rock star, this is the Bon Jovi of rock stars. This is Lord Panic, who he himself has said, if this was a proper court, normal court, it, it would just be thrown out. There is no way it would take place. Um, but that's a legal argument not- he's advancing because he's, he's, he's on behalf of his client. He's not an impartial observer. He's representing Boris Johnson's interests. Well, he interest was in- an impartial observer before when he first started saying these things. And then he now is obviously working for Boris. But he, he he is one of the most globally respected lawyers, and he has said that it shouldn't be happening. It's a kangaroo court, and also, um, if you know they do sort of oust Boris once and for all for this and give him all his sanctions and things, what's to stop this happening um, in perpetuity? Like. It will restrict the ability of any MP to answer a question in the Commons ever again. Well, well some people might say if it stops people lying now, it might stop people lying in the future. And that's a good thing if that's what they find, because they are challenged with, to make that decision, aren't they? That's, the, that's their role. But you're calling, you're, you keep saying he's lying. He was fined by the Met Police, who are actually a higher authority here. They fined him and they didn't say it was a party. They said it was a gathering. Boris has not lied about parties. That is what the original question was. And that yeah. is what the Privilege is Committee was supposed to get to, the mans rea, the intent. He didn't lie. And it's going to come out on Wednesday. But who knows whether we can trust these seven... MPs who are playing judge and jury who all seem to have, well a lot of them have, even the conservative ones seem to have in the past said he's guilty, he's guilty how dare this be happening it, it is a slur on this country's democracy. Okay, uh, Claire well people get a chance to hear it, it's going to be live so people can hear it and make up their own mind as well uh, Claire Bullivant, good to speak to you, thank you for joining us Thank you very much. Uh, she's, uh, as you can hear one of Boris Johnson's supporters, you can definitely hear that, she's editor of Conservative Post and if you like that... You can listen to us. We're sticking asthma. Have you forgotten? Well done. Every Monday to Thursday on Times Radio Breakfast.